Hey, what's up everyone? I'm the Burning Baron, but you can just call me the Baron. Gotta say, certainly wasn't expecting to make a video on an essentially 8 year old game. I expected myself to talk about Mario Kart eventually, but I don't think I was expecting the words new content and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe to be two concepts I'd be talking about at the same time. But here I am. Thanks to the February Nintendo Direct, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is getting DLC. Yep, this 5 year old port of a 2014 game that in of itself got DLC is getting its own DLC. Thinking about this one will make my brain hurt. So let's not think about how convoluted the idea is and start talking about the content itself. The Booster Course Pass is set to effectively double the game's track roster adding in another 48 tracks to the game, all remastered from past Mario Kart games. Mario Party Superstars called, it wants its hyped up customer back. Well my friend, you'll have to wait a bit. DLC was supposed to be your game, Mr. Direct, but someone stole your thunder. Seeing as my last wish list video did fairly well, I see no reason not to do the same thing for another franchise that seems to relish in its own history. I'll be giving my wish list of tracks I want to see return for this six wave DLC load. Track restrictions? I don't see any either. Any track is viable. Doesn't matter if they've returned before or not, cause as that trailer showed, that's not really stopping anything. Of course, the only real limit is the one Nintendo themselves set. No tracks from the arcade games. However, I will draw a limit on how many I will include. With 48 tracks, total spread across 8 games, that makes it very easy. 6 picks from each game. Made easier by 8 already being confirmed. There is one big thing about this video however. My footage. I have no means of recording 3DS games, which means any 3DS footage you see likely won't be mine. I'll link everything in the description below that isn't mine. The same will be for Mario Kart Tour's footage which is less of a problem of recording equipment and more of a the courses I want aren't currently in the game for me to record deal. Well, I think I've gotten the disclaimers out of the way. Let's talk tracks. Alright, starting with Super Mario Kart, the game that made my choices way too easy. Super Mario Kart's tracks were separated into themes, with there being 8 themes total in the game. Two of those themes are already in Mario Kart 8, Donut Plains and Rainbow Road, which conveniently leaves six track themes left for six track to choices. See how easy this is? So my picks are literally just one track from each track theme. On top of not having any track limits, I also don't see any reason to let difficulty pose as a roadblock either. My track choices include Mario Circuit 4, Ghost Valley 3, Bowser Castle 3, Choco Island 1, Koopa Beach 1, and Vanilla Lake 1. To avoid making this list as long as my Mario Party Superstars wish list, I'll try to group tracks together based on similarities. Mario Circuit 4, Ghost Valley 3, and Koopa Beach 1 were all chosen for being the only tracks of their themes that have not returned yet, making them more optimal choices compared to the others. Choco Island 1 and Vanilla Lake 1 were actually more chosen more for being simpler tracks. Despite literally just saying that difficulty wasn't a roadblock, I still find it necessary not to pick all the longer, harder tracks. So I picked the easier track variations of those track themes. Truth be told, I would not be opposed to seeing the two variants instead, since many of Super Mario Kart's tracks weren't all that hard in general. At least not when remastered and touched up. As for Bowser Castle 3, well, we haven't seen a single SNES Bowser's Castle return in any Mario Kart game that contains retro tracks. Speaks volumes considering that trend started in 2005 with Mario Kart DS. So it feels like it doesn't truly matter which one I picked, but I still decided to go with the Bowser's Castle 3 for being a solid challenge for a Bowser's Castle map. I was initially going to pick Bowser Castle 2, but I feel the whole midway point of the track was too complicated. Honestly, just not very strong track design. Man, this was a fun group to pick from. Being the only game to have nearly every track already reappear, Mario Kart 64 boiled down to which tracks I wanted to see come back again. At the current moment, Choco Mountain is the only N64 track shown off, which gives me five more tracks to pick from. To get that one obvious pick out of the way, Wario Stadium is high up on my wish list. 
This is the chance to finally finish off the Mario Kart 64 tracks by bringing in the only one that hasn't returned yet. The music's already there, and I get the sneaking suspicion that Wario Stadium is already possible for Mario Kart Tour. Based on a video I've seen, so there's reason to believe that this could be an option. For the rest of my choices, it was a matter of picking my remaining favorites. Not as easy as you'd think, considering Toad's Turnpike and Rainbow Road are already in the game. So my picks start at Luigi Raceway and Calamari Desert from the Mushroom Cup. Since this DLC seems to heavily be inspired from Mario Kart Tour, Calamari Desert would be an easy pick. Heck, they could even make it interesting and use the reroute course Calamari Desert 2 if they wanted. I'd be okay with either. As for Luigi Raceway, well, I honestly think it's my favorite of all of Mushroom Cup's starting courses. And like Wario Stadium, you have all the music all set up already. On top of that, Mario Kart Tour itself already seems to be teasing the fact that Luigi Raceway is already in the game, with at least one badge having the entire logo on it and an entire glider hat being based on the logo as well. My last two picks pull from re-returning options from both Mario Kart DS and Mario Kart Wii. Banshee Boardwalk and Bowser's Castle. Banshee Boardwalk, as I've come to realize, is kind of a sleeper track for me. A track I don't pay a lot of attention to, but realize I love for its cool track design and ominous atmosphere. And the N64 Bowser's Castle is my favorite of all of Bowser's Castles, so I had to pick this one. A really cool track design, some of the best music, which would may be made even better if they remixed it, and it's overall very challenging. I won't be displeased if they choose something like GameCube or Wii's Bowser's Castle in place of this one, but the N64 Bowser's Castle is still my number one pick. I struggled to think of which tracks I wanted for at least three games, but Super Circuits was the only one where my struggle came from having too many options I really wanted. Super Circuit kinda got shafted from the course of Mario Kart Wii to the base of Mario Kart 8, with most of the tracks either just being Bowser Castles or just generic looking tracks like Shy Guy Beach and Mario Circuit. But starting with Mario Kart 8's initial DLC, they started paying attention to Super Circuit's potential, with Cheese Land and Ribbon Road making a grand and less than grand, return. And with Tour's attention to Sunset Wilds and Cheap Cheap Island, and Sky Garden returning in both Tour and this DLC, it makes Super Circuit's lineup the most fun to look through. Before I get into this one, something I neglected to mention and realized I forgot midway into this recording. I know a lot of the currently confirmed tracks are pulled directly from Mario Kart Tour which means that it's likely every track will either be from or planning on being in Mario Kart Tour. That still doesn't stop much, since neither Shroom Ridge or Coconut Mall are currently in Mario Kart Tour. If anything, the tracks we actually get only predict Mario Kart Tour further. But it does, it does mean that my selections can be slightly less realistic, as they don't all consider the tracks already in Tour. Back to the predictions themselves, much like Mario Kart 64, I get 5 picks here due to Sky Garden being confirmed, and it was a mix between easy and hard. But my picks are Boo Lake, Sunset Wilds, Snowland, Yoshi Desert, and Rainbow Road. Boo Lake is one of those tracks I don't think of much, but still find it interesting enough to ask for. I feel like it would be easy to work with, especially if they choose to include a Ghost Valley track, as they're very similar in looks. Sunset Wilds is one of my personal favorites, and another very easy pick due to it being in tour to begin with. The last three all boil down to just being favorites. Snowland may not be the most interesting snow track, but I still love it regardless, and I feel they can make it look beautiful with a redesign. Yoshi Desert is my all-time favorite track in Super Circuit, for two very easy reasons. I love deserts, and Yoshi is my favorite character. Congrats, you targeted my favorites, you win and Rainbow Road. Well, we gotta have some more Rainbow Roads. You can't tell me they'll add 48 tracks and not include a Rainbow Road. Game Boy Advance's Rainbow Road is next in line, so I see no reason not to bring this beauty of a track back. Though I'm sure we can all assume that blessed Paper Mario reference won't return with it. Remember, modern Nintendo doesn't like classic Paper Mario. That would still be a shame though. In contrast to Super Circuit, Double Dash was hard because none of the tracks stand out to me that much. It feels really weird to say that because I love Double Dash and I played it to hell and back when I was younger. But the tracks just feel so similar to each other in theme, making it hard to pick a diverse set. 
Comparing it to the fact that all but five tracks share a music theme with each other, it's clear that a lot of the basic themes are reused across 11 tracks. It was especially hard concerning the Flower Cup, since nearly every track within that cup had similarities to other tracks. Mushroom Bridge being the same type of theme as Mushroom City, Mario Circuit being another circuit, Daisy Cruiser sharing the same vacation theme as Peach Beach, and Waluigi Stadium and Wario Coliseum both being arenas. But regardless, I still made the picks, even if I don't fully agree with them. My picks were Peach Beach, Mario Circuit, Waluigi Stadium, Mushroom City, DK Mountain, and Wario Coliseum. Look, I know a lot of these picks kinda conflict with each other, or other tracks in general. Waluigi Stadium, Wario Stadium, and Wario Coliseum not only conflict with each other, but also with the DS Wario Stadium already in the game. But at the end of the day, I really couldn't find many other picks I wanted. Peach Beach and Mario Circuit are also a result of that. I'd have picked Daisy Cruiser, but that would have stacked a bit too many Flower Cup options. Mushroom City and DK Mountain are really the only two tracks I feel safe with, with one track being a track that has yet to return, and DK Mountain only having any conflictions if they decided to go with D Dino Dino Jungle as well. Honestly, I feel Double Dash is the one game where any representation chosen wouldn't be a problem with me. If none of my options made it in, it's nothing I'd lose sleep over. Eh, I'll let Nintendo take the wheel for this game. Mario Kart DS was another game that boiled down to which favorites I wanted to return again. With a total of 5 tracks not seeing returns yet, and almost all of those options having a detail to note, it made the DS line lineup a little easier to pick through. Shroom Ridge is already returning, leaving behind two more circuit picks, Figure 8 Circuit and Mario Circuit, and the finale tracks of Bowser's Castle and Rainbow Road. Well, I already have two Bowser's Castle tracks, but Rainbow Road. Put the pieces together, friends. Mario Kart 8 was built around anti-gravity, yet Mario Kart DS's Rainbow Road was making that work before it was cool. It was a crime already that this Rainbow Road wasn't in the base game, but let's not make the same mistake twice. Yes, DS's Rainbow Road is an easy pick, and my second Rainbow Road choice. My other choices are Luigi's Mansion, Mario Circuit, Airship Fortress, and Peach Gardens. Luigi's Mansion and Airship Fortress are once again easy tour-based picks, as well as two very strong DS tracks, especially Airship Fortress. Mario Circuit, yeah, really conflicting with two other Mario Circuits already chosen. I guess Figure 8 Circuit would be okay instead, as it fits the Mario Kart 8 thing. As for Peach Gardens, not gonna lie, even I'm asking why, myself why. It's not necessarily one of my favorite DS tracks, but I feel the theme alone is more interesting than the track itself. Another sleeper track, if you will. One I pay even less attention to than both Banshee Boardwalk and Boo Lake. Maybe Mario Kart 8 Deluxe could fix that. And now we return to another fun game to pick from. I will always stand by this opinion. Mario Kart Wii's new tracks are the strongest in the entire franchise. I love just about every track in the game. Sure, the circuit tracks are just standard circuits, but just about every other track was unique and visually appealing. Coconut Mall is already confirmed to return, giving me room to talk about five more tracks from this legendary lineup. Toad's Factory, DK Summit, Daisy Circuit, Maple Treeway, and Dry Dry Ruins are my picks. DK Summit and Maple Treeway are, once again, easy tour-based picks that I'm glad can be called easier options. Both are also conveniently two of my favorite Wii tracks, and with the game pulling from tour, I'm really glad these two tracks have better odds of returning. Daisy Circuit is easily one of my favorite tracks in the game. It's also not too hard, but still provides a slightly lengthier challenge. But I will admit, the music is a main reason I want this track to return. As I've said back in my Mario Party Superstars wish list, music sometimes plays a huge role in my decisions, and Daisy Circuit's theme is by and far one of my favorites. Toad's Factory is a really cool concept track that feel, I feel needs to see the light of day again. You don't get many factory themed tracks, if any. And Toad's Factory manages to include a really big gimmick in the form of conveyor belts and still make the track easier for people to get the hang of. And Dry Dry Ruins is my favorite track in the whole game, for once again being a really cool desert themed track with a heavy Yoshi theme. With Yoshi Desert's Yoshi Sphinx, that could easily be used for both tracks. 
though I will admit that it's very unlikely that both return. Still, so many other Wii tracks to pick from, I wouldn't be disappointed with any of them. Much like Double Dash, I can't say it was easy picking from Mario Kart 7, but for more reasons than just the tracks not standing out. I flat out don't like most of Mario Kart 7's new tracks. A stark contrast to Mario Kart Wii, I feel Mario Kart 7's new tracks are the weakest in the series. I'd say about three or four tracks really stood out to me, with Neo Bowser City, Piranha Plant Slide, and Music Park already being in the game, and I already have two Rainbow Road picks. And with Toad Circuit already returning, for whatever reason, my picks are Shy Guy Bazaar, Woohoo Loop, Rock Rock Mountain, Wario Shipyard, and Rosalina's Ice World. I feel Mario Kart 7 is super easy for Nintendo to work with, seeing as more than half of the game is already into her, but that just made it harder for me to work with. So many of my picks boil down to, meh, it's easier just because it's already in tour. With that excuse applying to literally all of my picks except for Woohoo Loop. I picked Woohoo Loop because they already have Woohoo Town Battle Stage in the game, so they have something to work with. But Wario Shipyard was another one of the stronger tracks in Mario Kart 7. Rock Rock Mountain and Shy Guy Bazaar are bad tracks, just not noteworthy ones, and I'm baffled at myself for picking Rosalina's Ice World. Like, I still don't know why I resorted to that one. Honestly, at the end of it, I really don't know what I was doing with this one. Nintendo, the wheel's all yours. Neo Bowser City's already in Mario Kart 8, you can't ask for more than that. By and far, the strangest turnaround in this whole DLC idea. Mario Kart Tour is now having its own new tracks featured as retro tracks in a game released before it. Let that sink in. If you can explain it, feel free to, because I'm lost. But as of right now, three tour tracks are returning for this DLC pack. Tokyo Blur, Paris Promenade, and Ninja Hideaway. I'm personally concluding that they'll use the four variations of the city tracks, as they are the most complete versions of the tracks. Something kinda already seen with some of the Tokyo Blur footage. But with three picks of mine to add to this, well it was kinda easy. Vancouver Velocity and Berlin Byways are my two main picks, while London Loop is my third. I wouldn't have a problem if London Loop didn't make it, but Vancouver Velocity and Berlin Byways are my big time picks. As a biased Canadian piece of trash, of course Vancouver Velocity is on top. And I'll be fully honest, Berlin Byways, music alone. I want this track for its killer theme, won't hide that. As for London Loop, well the London theme looks really nice, so I'll take it for that. But I don't think I'd complain if we got something like Sydney Sprint or Singapore Speedway instead of London Loop. But if I don't get either Vancouver Velocity or Berlin Byways, I might have to riot. And that concludes my wish list for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's DLC. Was aiming to be a lot more direct compared to my Mario Party wish list, but I have less to talk about, and a lot of what I did talk about was easily grouped together. But what did you think of my wish list? And what tracks do you want to see come back for this new DLC? Let me know in the comments. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and I will see you all next time.